Hello everyone, today we are insulating the shed so we can turn into a backyard office. I'm gonna be sharing with you some very handy tips so you save time and money when insulating your shed. And most importantly, I'm gonna show you how to insulate the ceiling the right way so you don't have any moisture problem, especially on a shed where you don't have a soffit like mine. Before I start installing the insulation, there's a little of prep work I like to take care of. I use expansion foam to cover and seal areas where the insulation would not fit. Typically, you want to cover the corners of the shed and behind the bottom plate. I also like to seal behind the electrical boxes and places where the wire is penetrating the wall. And for window and doors, I use an special expansion foam which won't expand as much. This is important so you don't bend the framing of the walls or the windows and doors themselves. And then I run a thick bead of caulk in front of the bottom plate around the whole shed. Now I'm ready to start installing the insulation. Choosing the right insulation is pretty straightforward. If your shed is framed with 2x4s, you want R13 insulation. However, if it is framed with 2x6s, you want to insulate it with R19. Next, you want to figure out the width of the insulation beds. Typically, you find either 15 or 23 inches wide insulation. My shed has 2x4 exterior walls and are 24 inches apart. So technically, I would need a R13 insulation that is 23 inches wide. This insulation is very difficult to find. So for me, I'm gonna go with the R19 insulation, which I believe is the best solution for this scenario. Let me know down in the comments what would you do if you're in my shoes. Then I take the wall height measurement and transfer that over to a bed of insulation. To cut the insulation, I use a scrap piece of 2x4 and a utility knife. I place the insulation inside the wall and then I staple from the top down. I seen people stapling on the face of the 2x4. However, the recommended method is to staple on the inside of the 2x4. Whenever there is wire across the bay, I split the insulation in half. I tuck half of it behind the wire and the other half, I just let it lay in front of the wire. And then I finish stapling the insulation inside the wall. Sometimes you may run into a bay which is narrow and may need a vertical cut. If that's the case, use the scrap 2x4 and just run it down the insulation. And whenever you run across an electrical box, do not tuck the insulation in. Take your time and cut out an opening for the electrical box. Then install it inside the wall. This will provide a much cleaner installation and also a much better insulation results. Insulating the walls are pretty straightforward. The difficult part comes to insulating the ceiling and you want to make sure you insulate the right way to prevent any moisture build up and damage to the interior later on. And the moisture problem that you get inside the shed is because the air is trapped inside and can't go anywhere. Just like you would see on a water bottle if you set it outside. There's nowhere for the air to escape unless you open the cap and cut the bottom off. And that is the same principle we're going to apply to the shed. We're going to allow air to intake through the sides, travel inside the ceiling and exit through the roof. And to make that happen, I'll start on the roof by removing the ridge cap. 
Typically, these caps are installed directly on top of the roof shingles. And as I remove them, you're going to notice how wet underneath the shingles are. That's because the condensation is trying to escape. I'm installing here what's called a ridge vent. And this ridge vent is going to be about 8 inches from the edge of the roof. That's because I have at least 6 inches of overhang and I want to make sure that the ridge vent is inside of the shed and not on the outside. With the circular saw, I cut a 2.5 to 3 inch wide open across the whole roof. This open is what going to allow the air to escape. And after cutting the roof, I place the ridge vent centered to the roof as much as possible and I nailed it going down. If you choose, before nailing, add a bead of roof silicone underneath the vent. And just like you would install ridge caps on a normal roof, you install it right on top of the ridge vent. One thing I missed that I had to go back and fix is that at the beginning make sure to have some shingles right underneath the roof vent. After installing the ridge vent, this is what the inside would look like. And through this gap, hot air can now escape outside. And before finishing the roof up, I'm gonna give it a wash. Then it's time to move to the inside. And what I'm doing is drilling a set of three three quarter inch holes right on this two by four that's used as an overhang. My goal is to line up these holes with the pocket of air that's in this baffle. And after I line up the baffle with the holes I just drilled, I staple the baffle to the roof OSB. With this modification on your roof and soffit, now you have a complete path for the air to travel. And this should prevent any future moisture problems inside the shed. And this is why it's good to know ahead of time if you're finishing the shed. That way you can build it for the right use. If you're deciding to build your own shed, I recommend you check in the description below. That will take you to everydayshed.com where you're gonna find material lists, plans, and videos that will guide you step by step on how to build your own shed. Then I drilled the holes for every bay on the front and the back of the shed. Now there's a chance of bugs and critters getting inside these holes. So I do recommend some kind of mesh or filter whenever you get a chance. And with the holes drilled, I finish stapling all the baffles on the inside. I then went ahead and installed the insulation in the ceiling. I used the same approach on the ceiling as we did on the walls. However, right where the baffle sits, the wall is not deep enough for my insulation. So I did cut and remove some of the insulation, making it thinner, and that way I'm able to staple the insulation inside the bay. When working with insulation, make sure to wear gloves and masks. Also, I recommend you wearing a long sleeve t-shirt. And after you're done insulating the shed, it's time for drywall. If you want to check that out next, there's a video right here. If you want to check out the complete process where we're taking this shed and turn it into a backyard office, there's a video right here. I hope you learned something in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.